Finding life beyond Earth is no longer a dream. It's a discovery that will likely be made during our lifetime. And it will change everything. Oh, welcome back. Oh, that's a mess. So I interviewed Dr. Andrew Simeon, the PI, Principal Investigator for Breakthrough Listen, and also the 2024 Drake SETI Prize winner. Andrew is the man, the chief scientist. Uh, well, I've been at Berkeley for some time. I've actually, um, uh, surprisingly enough, I've been doing SETI for almost 10 years now. So I came to Berkeley in, um, in 2004 as an undergraduate student. Um, and I got involved in SETI in, um, in 2005. It was basically my first research project here as an undergraduate researcher. As of a couple of months ago, uh, I'm the director of the Berkeley SETI Research Center. And the, the Berkeley SETI Research Center is um, really a, um, just a, sort of an umbrella organization that brings together a whole variety of people at Berkeley that are interested in the search for extraterrestrial life, especially intelligent life. We are able to use the the, the latest and greatest uh, and largest telescopes that, that humanity has built. And that really increases our sensitivity to especially very weak signals. Uh, and we tend to use um, this kind of a, a scheme to do targeted observation of specific stars or extrasolar planets that we think are very interesting. And, um, and one of the, the telescopes that I think we're most excited about is one called the Square Kilometer Array. And this is a large international effort to build the largest radio telescope that humans have ever constructed something like an order of magnitude, a factor of 10 more sensitive than any radio telescope that's ever been built in the past. And uh, for the last couple of years, we've been uh, really working very hard to make sure that SETI is included as a, an aspect of that telescope and a, and a goal of the telescope. And I think we've been, we've been successful at that. And it looks like that telescope is going to have the capacity to conduct SETI observations. And so we're very, very excited about that. Um, because we have so much collecting area with that telescope, again, a, a full square kilometer uh, of collecting area, for the very first time we'll be sensitive to what we call leakage signals from other civilizations. So usually when we do a SETI experiment, um, the, the kinds of signals that we would be sensitive to are many, many factors of 10 brighter than any transmissions that we produce on Earth. Um, so the, uh, the basic premise of those searches is, is that in order for us to really to detect anything, some advanced intelligence would have to be intentionally leaking a lot of energy into space or maybe intentionally signaling the Earth. But with this new telescope, uh, we'll have such high sensitivity that we would actually be sensitive to just the, the isotropic leakage, the, the very high power aircraft radars and, and high power FM and TV radio signals that leave the Earth from between 5 and 10 light years away. Within 5 parsecs, so within about 15 light years, there's maybe about 75 stars, something like that. So that means from a few of the nearest stars, we could actually detect the Earth quite readily. I set it up through um, Breakthrough Listen, through his office, through his assistant, and I sent him a list of questions, so he knew exactly what I was going to ask, my questions and your questions, viewers. And um, he seemed very happy with that. And a few days later, we set up a Zoom call. I called him early morning in California. And uh, he didn't know that we were going to record the interview. Um, I kind of messed up. I just kind of assumed that as a YouTube filmmaker, asking to interview somebody would mean filming it. But he didn't know that. So he asked me not to press record. Ha! I've got a request out for another spokesperson from SETI or Breakthrough Listen. That would be great to actually have them on camera. But a second best, <laughs> I am going to go through my notes, my questions and your questions and try and remember as precisely as possible what Dr. Andrew Simeon actually said, because he actually said some very interesting things. So I started off asking him, after decades of listening for extraterrestrial life, I've seen hello and hearing nothing. What was the big change for listening for a technological signature? You know, no longer hoping that the aliens would say hello to us, but actually us listening for their presence, just the radio frequency of their technological life or whatever. 
Dr. Simeon's answer was brilliant. He first of all corrected me, good, and said it's not just radio, Simon. We're also looking for lasers. There's a laser facility on Mount Wilson that could measure, say, the aliens were sending laser beams to communicate. And we're not only looking at distant exoplanets, we're looking everywhere, including for RF frequencies, electromagnetic wave band. I mean, these are aliens. You don't know how they're going to communicate in our own solar system. So if there's a probe orbiting Earth, sending back data of my goat farm in France to planet Zog, we would hear their transmission. So they're really serious looking. Then I asked him, Dr. Simeon, how do you define a technological signature, you know, and also how do you find it? So th this was great. He says he doesn't know how to define it. It just means that it's a civilization that has reached a point where their planet is buzzing with some type of technology. And what he said next is really interesting. He said, maybe we see a tall structure. Oh, really? Well, oh, that'd be amazing. Or anything which reveals a level of technology that means that they are an advanced civilization. And then we talked about goats. Oh, actually, we did. <laughs> because the good point is, here on planet Earth, we are one of the very few, there are a few others, creatures who actually use tools. Teacup, hammer, every teacup is a hammer. Most don't. I mean, I have a super intelligent goats and they don't build cars. You know, they don't need a car. They live in their own life. So would an alien actually have a technological civilization? Obviously not. Most won't. Most will be Mr. Blobby floating around in the distant alien soup, you know. And rightly so. But we want to get in touch with Mr. Smarty Pants, who can phone home. I mean, that would be amazing. And now one of your viewer questions. I can't remember who actually raised this, but it was really smart. And it did me the world of good. Because Dr. Simeon, when I asked your smart question, actually really started to answer more openly. Let me tell you the question first, and then I'll tell you where I'm going with softening him up for the big question. But this was your question. Is, is there a maximum range worth looking for? A very distant signal might be from a long extinct civilization. So is there an outer shell that breakthrough listen is even worth looking for? Oh, great question. And Dr. Simeon really liked it. He said, yeah, that's brilliant. Because once you get to a signal that you've heard or detected, that's say, over a thousand years ago, by the time it's taken a thousand years to reach us here on Earth, it means that they've now been a thousand years more advanced. Now, if you go back in human history, just... 200 years, we didn't really have radio. A thousand years, you know, we didn't even have YouTube. <laughs> no, I mean, you know, so a thousand years is about probably the longest that it would be worth thinking that that civilization that sent the signal that we've just heard still exists and we're worth communicating with. Because anything more than that, you know, has the signal stopped. Dr. Simeon said the duration of the signal is also very important because maybe we pick it up for a few years and then it suddenly stops. Does that imply that their power station went offline or they've moved on or destroyed themselves? You know, very, very good point. So they are looking and listening for signals nearer to Earth nearer to Earth physically and hence in time. Ideally, they would like to hear something five years away, 10, 20, 30, a thousand years. It's probably an outer shell of what's possible. So that kind of went down well, and it was a very brilliant viewer question. By now, I'd kind of 
thought I'd better deep dive into my gorilla in the room, the $64 million question is, um, so has Breakthrough Listen actually found a signal? I hear that SETI in Europe have got found candidates that you are actually um, investigating. What did he say? <laughs> no. <laughs> so, they did find the signal that I mentioned in the last film. I th think they called it Breakthrough Listen 1, and that's in the Alpha Centauri um, constellation. It's a planet. It's I think it's only about five light years away. And the reason that they focused on these nearer stars to Earth is because they could get more resolution than a distant signal. I mean, he said that you know something like Voyager or a very distant space probe that we've launched might have even lower power than a whole alien planet going Brr! but that power is culminated it's focused back to earth whereas an alien planet would just be emitting a 360 degree buzz that's coming out into all directions in space and by the time that weak signal reached us it would be difficult to find any detail or modulation in. So the nearer it is, the better chance of finding what they're saying. So that's that was a very interesting answer. So that's why they started looking at our nearest neighbours. Plus, he said, our recent search for exoplanets have turned up planets almost orbiting every nearest star, and we can actually now see them. We can detect those planets when they move past the surface of the star. We can see it a little sphere, or we can see a dip in the light intensity, and there's a Doppler shift as well. So I mean, so we've, we definitely confirmed that there are planets in close star solar systems, so why not listen? Then he said something very interesting. He actually revealed that although the BLG1 signal was probably interference, I said, are you still looking at it? And he said, uh, yeah, we're still studying it, meaning I think there might be something there. And then he let slip, I think just because it's true, but there's other signals nearby that might be better candidates. So, pff, you know... They're obviously focusing on that part of space. I think it's the Alpha Centauri constellation or that star, you know, that, that, that area. So there's multiple planets. Have they found something? Possibly from the first signal. Are they still looking? Definitely. Have they found something new? Yes, and they're still studying it. So... I mean, is that an answer? Not good enough, I thought. I just wanted to know that they'd found E.T. But he's not going to say that, and possibly they haven't. Because my next question was, you know, okay, so you find E.T. Um, are you going to keep it to yourself? Is this an American project? I mean, is it going to be government secrecy? And he went, no, Breakthrough Listen is actually a global organisation of scientists, and they would be dead keen to internationally share all results. If we'd found aliens, he said, you would be the first to know. And so would the world. It's not secret. Breakthrough Listen's headquarters is in Oxford, England. Uh, they have telescopes that they use um, in South Africa and in Australia, the Square Kilometre Array, which is, I thought it was ready, but it's still being built, Dr. Simeon said, and also telescopes in um, the United States. There is nothing that they wouldn't reveal to the world science community. So I think we should definitely keep listening to Breakthrough Listen. I asked him what his predicted timeline is for a contact. And he said, well, his lifetime. OK, fair enough. But I said, well, aren't you under pressure by the funders of Breakthrough Listen to actually find something sooner than that? And he said... As a scientist, he isn't under pressure from the administration or the funders. He's under personal pressure to actually complete his task. But no, they, they don't actually pressurize the science. But of course, I mean, their funding is going to be finite. You know, if it drew a complete blank, 
say after 5, 10, 15, 20 years, would they give up and move their funds to fund another project? I don't know. But hopefully we'll at least have an inkling of a possible technological signature. And he also talked about biosignatures as well. So not only could it be a radio frequency, electromagnetic frequency, because they're aliens and we don't know what they're saying or talking with. It could be laser, as I've said. But we're also looking for, is there evidence of technology in their atmosphere? You know, burning stuff or a biological signature of the kind of stuff that we all make by breathing and life itself. And that might have already been found. A group in Cambridge have found biosignatures in an atmosphere on an exoplanet that looks suspiciously like whatever's on the planet is actually alive. So we live in interesting times. So I'm sorry I can't actually share the video with you because I, you know, I being very honest with Dr. Simeon, didn't record it because he asked me not to. I've reached out, as I've said, to SETI and hopefully their PR and press officer uh, will get back to me. And also NASA Ames um, could be a possible interview. So hopefully you can see the person talking and you can judge by body language whether you think they're telling the truth. I certainly liked Dr. Simeon. He was prepared to talk to me even without recording it. And um, I asked him a favor. I said, now that you've chatted and I told him a bit about my personal background in uh, with family members who worked in radio astronomy going way back and names that he knew. I asked him if he could put out a good word to the SETI Brits who are listening community. So when my little emails pop up on their desktop, I'm not just a crazy nutty person doing YouTube in a cave in France. So I, I think he took me seriously. So, so that's good. So my takeaway thought from meeting Dr. Simeon and talking about breakthrough listen is we live in interesting times. We now have the technology to network a giant ear of radio telescopes throughout our planet to be able to listen and hear a possible technological signature from an exoplanet within a few hundred years time distance from Earth. Isn't that fantastic, viewers? Welcome to a brand new era of research. Definitely the truth is out there. We are trying to understand why we even exist. We are the SETI Institute.